Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Let's Talk About Sex here on XFM 100.2 with me, Melanie Kelly. And in the studio, I have my beautiful, beautiful Emma Hogg. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you on. doing? How are you doing? Well, it's soon <laughs> Christmas, you know, in a couple of weeks, actually. I know, and to be honest, I totally forgot. I wanted to bring us, you know, like Christmassy hats, like an antlers and everything, and I totally forgot. Oh, well, yeah. I ran out of the house and... I just forgot Aww. them. But I do have my Christmas crunchy. Okay. Okay. As long as you have your Christmas crunchy. <laughs> scrunchy. It's crunchy. Scrunchy. I have I have I have Christmas um sweets mm. in front of me. Yes, how come there are Christmas sweets here? Yes. Oh nice. Because Jay is on a Christmas diet. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas. We're going to talk about Christmas. Yes, love Christmas, at Christmas time. Love at Christmas, love being single, love being in a couple. What mm. does Christmas do to a couple, to the sex life maybe as well? Yeah, well basically like I went on Instagram mm -hmm. and I asked you guys for questions. Mm -hmm. And they sent in their questions. Okay. So we're going to answer those questions. I also gave examples of questions and I said, do you want us to answer this? Do you want us to answer that? Okay. You know, so we got votes for yes, votes for no. So um, we can go through all okay. the questions and answer them. Off you go. Well, you're going to answer them. I'm just going to add to them. Okay, so First um, question. this is a really cute question. Cute question. So this question is, I got my crush for Secret Santa. What should I gift? Oh, well, if I got my crush for Secret Santa, I know what I would give him. What? Lingerie. <laughs> <laughs> to a dude. To a dude. If he's your crush. But what do you mean you'd get him lingerie? Like, what of would course. you give him? Like, uh, boxes? To, to, no, for me. Ah, for you. <laughs> <laughs> Emma. <laughs> but that's not really for him, is it? Like, well, ultimately, <laughs> it is for him. It's for you too. To Come enjoy. on. Like, no, it's a little bit for you too. Um, to like. Enjoy it together. <laughs> I like the way you just turned red. I've never seen you turn red before. <laughs> I think it's a cool idea, no? And it's a way of putting yourself out there to him. Okay, no, I, I'm going. I'm going on a different tangent. Okay, go on. I'm if, joking. If yeah. I no, yeah, that's a good joke. If I, it's very straightforward and in your face. <laughs> it's, yeah, you. I think you can't go wrong, gay. Eh? No. But but it's his crush, right? So, um, it's not. So is this a girl saying that she got no, a it, guy? No, it's a dude. Ah, it's a dude. It's a dude who got his crush. And we, we don't know if his crush is a girl or a guy. But he got his crush for Secret Santa. Ah, I thought it was so, the other way around. That's why I would give him lingerie, you know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so if it's a girl, we don't know yet. Or what, what do you, I would, on a more serious note, mm, mm, mm. depending what you want out of this person, Okay, mm -hmm. if you want a relationship, if you want to be noticed, I would give something that, that first of all, I would, I love giving gifts, Emma. I know you do. I love giving gifts. I love um, finding out what somebody likes and, you know, and then feeding into that and giving them the perfect gift. That's exactly what I wanted to say. Like, tune in with who this person is to show that you're paying attention. Exactly. Hey, to show that you've, like, understood their heart. And I like giving gifts, which are very, very personal. So, for example, I get frames done. Okay. Um, mugs done. There's a lot of websites nowadays where you can literally give something personalized, which is personal to that person. So, I think, as you said, if you give something personalized, you're actually showing that person, one, what kind of person you are. That you tune in. That you tune in to that person, you know? And yeah. also, you are kind of telling them, I am giving you extra special attention. Hmm. Hint, yeah. hint, hint. I think even, like, there was, you remember that episode of Friends where Chandler is in love with Joey's um, girlfriend? Mm, it was one of the, like, earlier seasons. Okay. I'm, 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 my brain is, yeah, I don't remember. Anyway, Kathy, her name was. Kathy, yeah. And anyway, and um, and it's Kathy's birthday. And probably Joey and gave her a stupid gift. And Joey wasn't <laughs> even gonna get her a gift. And <laughs> I, I watched this recently. I'm not just like obsessed uh, with friends. Oh, I am okay. obsessed with friends, but I watched it recently. Okay. Joey wasn't even gonna get her a gift, but Chandler gets her this like early edition of the Velveteen Rabbit, which is one of her favorite childhood books. Um, so it was 
pricey. It was um, thoughtful. special, thoughtful, totally tuned in. And I think that's really Did she leave Joey cute, for Chandler? Like. She did in the end. But then oh. she cheated on Chandler. With Joey? No, with someone totally different. Okay. So let's Spoiler hope alert. That, that, that does not happen. <laughs> but anyway, I think we've answered that. Question. Yeah, I hope it's helpful. Yes. But I think it is. Okay. I don't like my husband's family, but since it's Christmas time, I have to be with them. Give me tips, please. That's Hard a good one. Good one. Good Hard one. Huh? How many listeners out there have all these Christmas lunches and Christmas <clears throat> dinners? Even with your own family, sometimes it's difficult. And or you have to sit through it all. Yeah. How do we cope, Emma? Okay, so let's go to the so the in-law situation, right? So two things come to my mind straight away. One is you have to work as a team on it because whenever in-laws get involved, they can create a divide between you, and that's the worst thing. You remember how we spoke about yes, in-laws once, and we spoke about how the couple is their own nucleus. And the families that you both came from, you know, you grew up in that nucleus and then you become your own. So you step out of that nucleus. Now, what happens is like there's sometimes there's difficulty with the separation and the parent tries to get involved or get in between or is very critical or whatever. Like, you know, there's all these funny dynamics, very judgmental or whatever. It's most damaging when you as a couple allow the in-law to get in between you. So it's really important that you just understand that you're on the same team, right? And you, it will, it will happen that you'll get flustered and that you'll fight. And but what if the in-laws, mm-hmm. uh, the, the in-laws bug me, but don't bug my husband? What if well, my husband, for example, really enjoys being with his family, and I don't enjoy being with his family? Well, your husband is your husband, right? So. even if he enjoys being with his family which is great good good for him like he needs to um tune in with you right i mean what 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 is his outcome for his relationship does he want a mediocre relationship or does he want um a kickass relationship that he is passionate about and wants to be in because if you want a fantastic relationship one that's you know that's going to last and is passionate and is fueled and you can't wait to see your partner then you have to give it energy Right? Can I also add something, however? Yeah. If you dislike your in-laws, mm. yeah. whoever wrote this question, mm. I, um, I'd, like, I'd, I'd like to invite this person to evaluate exactly, however, why she or he does not like the in-laws. Mm. Is it because of something they say to her? Is it something, or does it stem from her or him? You Good understand question. what I'm trying to say? Because if in reality, I I'm say have an antipathy for them because I have an antipathy for them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um then that is going to create friction with your husband because your husband is going to look at you and say, "Emma, what are they doing to you to to irritate you so much? What are they doing wrong?" Well, so 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 we have to understand also where why mm-hmm. there is this dislike. No, I love what you're saying because you're essentially saying practice self-awareness. Yes. Right? So Be ask aware. yourself what is bothering you about them. Yes. And typically what's happening is there is a dynamic. It's never just one or the other. Something is happening in yes. between. Yes. Right? But going back to your question before of the husband, you know, what if the husband's fine with the in-laws and yes. the wife isn't? I mean, what's important is that you need to be tuning in with each other, right? This is what I mean as work as a team. So the wife needs to be asking herself, okay, what Why? is happening? How much of it is mine? How much of it am I projecting onto them? What or how much mm. of it is coming from them? And how much of it is coming from and them? And to discuss with the husband. Exactly. And the husband, if you love your wife, you don't... Say, you know, you, uh, you don't you listen. her off, like you tune in. You ask, okay, like, what do we need to to be as a team? Like, what do we need to work as a team to support ourselves in this situation? How can I be there for you? What needs to adjust? And maybe they can agree to um, kind of put a limit on the amount of time spent there. Yeah, they can come up with their own strategies together, right? I mean, another thing that comes to my mind is kind of, When it comes to communicating with your in-laws, I think the best thing is to kind of let the child of the in-laws so yes, uh, communicate yes, yes. with them directly because they're 
their parents. You yes. know what I mean? Try not yeah. to get in between. They're their parents. They have a, a, a relationship a bond, uh, yes. that is important, you know, and kind of let them handle it. Let them be the defender of your relationship, the defender, protector, the whatever, like, because just as you are with your family, they need to be with theirs, yes. you know? And yes, yes. Cre- okay, yeah. fantastic. So we're going to go for a couple of songs. We're going to come back. Okay. And we're going to continue answering some questions about love at Christmas time. Love. <laughs> And welcome back to Let's Talk About Sex at Christmas Time here on XFM 100.2 with me, Melanie Kelly. And today in the studio, I have Emma Hogg. Hi, Emma. Hello. And we are answering questions in relation to Christmas time. So, another question. Let's go. Okay, so we got another question on Instagram, and this is, what can I do to handle overwhelm and stress situations during the holidays? Okay. Overwhelm and stress situations, Emma, mm. with regards to love, with regards to expectations. I suppose it's with regards to love, because I said, like, let's keep yes. it Christmassy and love. But yes. um, but I think it's also uh, love, expectations, they like sort of running around. There's a lot that's uh, Christmas time can be so busy. Yes, presents, uh, parties. But I think... If it, because it depends if this person is single, if this person is in a relationship. Mm. Um, Christmas highlights a lot the need to be with a loved one somehow. Mm-hmm. And I think it can make people who are single feel very lonely. Yeah. And in reality, people who are couples can still be very lonely. Yes. During Christmas. Yes. If they are not in a great relationship. But we have this idea that we watch all these movies, all these lovey-dovey movies where all the couples are perfect. Mm -hmm. I know we're derailing from that question. But I just want to put it out there that if you are single and you're feeling lonely and you look at everybody and everybody seems in love, it's just a picture that people paint, you know? Everybody has his own problems. Everybody's at different phases yes. in their lives. I think there are all many couples who are very in love. I yes. think it's just that um, we're all at different phases and we don't all need to be where each other And if you are is. single, would you much rather be in a relationship where you are not fulfilled? Or maybe in a relationship with yourself where you can really fulfill yourself? Nice one. You know? I think that takes us to the question, actually. Okay. Because so. she's speaking about stress and overwhelm, okay. right? So when I think about stress and overwhelm, I think about being in a state of urgency. Yes. Yeah. It's like, go, go, go. It's one thing after another. It's I need to accomplish this and do this and buy the presents and take care of my kids. And then I need to go to this event and that event. And, and so you're basically in, f- in fight or flight mode the whole time. time which means that you can't think clearly because not enough oxygen is getting to your prefrontal cortex. You, l- you also can't recover. Every, when you're in fight or flight mode, every cell in your body behaves selfishly. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then your thoughts are like, oh my God, I can't handle this and I can't handle that. So what's really important when you're dealing with any kind of stress or overwhelm, whether at the, during the holidays or during a really busy time with work, is to concentrate on your state. Mm -hmm. Right. So your state, your physical and mental state, get yourself into a healthy state. So um, and you can choose your state. Right. So sometimes your state, if you're extremely tired, but you want to be in a positive state, it is a state of grace. Right. And presence. It doesn't have to be mega energy. Right. If you're going on stage, it has to be like mega yes, energy. Right. Yes, Unless yes. you're playing a depressed person. Or yes, something. yes. Yes. Well, there are plenty of times where I had to film and I wouldn't be in a great place. Mm. And you just have to master the energy and you have to yeah. play the role. But I'm not talking but about f- about faking it. Right. No. I'm talking about taking care of your yes. energy. Remember that like we are most effective when we take care of ourselves first. That's the only way that we can take care of others. This morning I woke up, Emma, and I was in a bit of a very anxious state. And this is going to sound very weird. And first thing today, I had my yoga lesson. And the most obvious thing that anybody could think of is, okay, fantastic. You know, she's got a yoga lesson and, um, and it will help me clear my mind and calm down. But 
Hmm. I also knew that I had a long list of things to do. And my major panic was that I did not have enough time. Hmm. So sometimes what you think is the obvious answer, Moshavia, you go to yoga, was not the right thing for me to do. Because, because it was extra. Because I would go to yoga and I would spend the entire hour and a quarter jumping in the inside, feeling feeling that I'm not doing my work. So at that point, you the couldn't most, be present. No, I couldn't be present. So if I'm mm-hmm. going to go to my lesson and, then it's and, not I, nourishing and I know I'm not going to be present, I'm going to go for nothing. So I decided to do what was best for me at the time. And the best for me at the time was to go sit down and do the work. And three hours later, I was my energy had already lifted. So what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you have to really, really, really listen to what you really need. You have to be really attuned with yourself, what you want, what you need, rather than what is expected or what we are yes. taught or told or conditioned from <coughs> out there. If you're stressed, go to yoga. It helps, but you have to be in tune with what you need. I need I, to work. I love what you're saying because one, you're speaking about flexibility yes. and kind of like, okay, like, for example, you know how the morning routine is like super yes. popular. Like yes. I have a morning routine and I, I really like it. But like for a year, my morning routine was really strict. Like I, I always, you know, it was exercise for 20 minutes, meditate for 15 minutes. It was always this, you know. And after a while, it's like sometimes you just want something different. Now I know that my first half hour is for me, but I keep it flexible. So sometimes it's exercising, sometimes it's meditation, sometimes it's gratitude practice, sometimes it's a walk. Some, you know what I mean? It's a bit flexible. Sometimes I lie in bed and read a book. Yes. You know? So I love what you're saying because you're saying tune in. And also another thing you said was focus. What are your main priorities? Yes. What absolutely needs to happen this week, Because for example. Because sometimes I think we today. get anxious and we stress about mm. things that when you prioritize, you realize that, why am I stressing? And not everything is urgent. No, and I love also writing um, points and notes. When I feel very, very stressed, what I do is I, I write um, a note mm-hmm. and I prioritize. I say, okay, this has to be done today. This has to be done today. This can wait until tomorrow. Exactly. If it's not urgent, you schedule no, it. Exactly. Exactly. So that is one way of reducing stress and anxiety. I love it. Um, yeah. High five. High five. Okay, shall we go for another question? We hope that helps. Yes. How do you handle getting a gift you don't like? Ouch. And I love it. There's a little poo emoticon as well. Ouch. <laughs> How do you handle that, Emma? I think it depends on who you get the gift from. Ma. Like, I think that if it's someone you don't know well, you just say thank you. You're just great. You're just grateful. I think you're. All, I think gratitude, like, is always important. I think with the people who matter, though. It's good to communicate when I show them. I, I read when you're not happy with that it. That should know me. I, I I do comment, unfortunately. As you're saying, if it's somebody, look. I, I don't think it's bad to comment. Look, because right? you said unfortunately, I think honesty is better than anything. Ara, the thing is this: as I said earlier on, I love giving gifts, so I put a lot of care in giving gifts. Yes, but unfortunately. Not everybody else is out there like me. Yes, and so sometimes you receive a gift that's really unthoughtful. It's like it's not for you. It's like it was bought just to tick a box. Or sometimes you Socks, get a gift that's shawls. really clearly re-gifted. Yes. So, <laughs> so, yes. So what do you do? I mean, I usually just put on a smile, say thank you, show that I'm not overly excited by it so that I can give you... Um, You can tell that yeah. I'm not excited by it. Yeah. If you're somebody that you should have known, I will. I would actually say, hmm, okay, I never thought I liked this. <laughs> 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 cool. <gasps> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have a receipt. Can I change it? I, I would. I would ask that. I. I, I mean, I, if it's from your partner, for example. I mean, there needs to be like a bit of communication. I mean, I because with a gift, you can say no, right? You're allowed to say no, just like with anything else. So you can receive it and say thank you for the gift. At the same time, like this really isn't something I'd enjoy or 
you know, kind of, can I change it? Are you okay with it if I change it? And then they might get offended, but I think, like, if it's your partner, like, and their intention is to connect with you, they're going to be curious, okay, how come? Like, what, what, how come it doesn't jibe with you? Like, what, you know, what, what could have been different? And then you have the conversation, eh? and it's a learning experience, so... So I guess our tip is, one, it depends who the gift is coming from. Yeah. I think that is priority. Yeah, I think if it's a stranger, it's going to be... Oh, uh, not a stranger, okay. but if oh, someone... it's an acquaintance. Uh, yeah, big deal, like, you know, you know yeah. yes. Big but, deal. But so I guess your nearest and dearest. We answer that, yes? I think. I think so. Okay, so we're going to go But what if it's someone in between? Uh, 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 sorry, sorry. No, I'm thinking, okay, what if on. it's someone in between? Like, not an acquaintance, not... Like an in-law? Your nearest... Ah. Hi, ma. Regina, Linlos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, enough with the in-laws. I mean, I've had a couple. Me too. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, mm, you, I, you, you just are polite. Yeah. You know, you just say thank you. I think it depends on and the quality of the relationship with your in-laws. Exactly. As well. And then like you some, say... Like some people get on like a house on fire with their yes. in-laws and they can say like, listen, do you mind yes. if I change stuff for me? You know, other people... I don't know, Emma. Communication isn't years, that clear. Over the years, let me tell you my honest opinion. I have been so disappointed with gifts over the years, really, from any kind of person except the people closest to me, and there are only, like, a couple, okay? Anything mm. else, I've been so disappointed um, that uh, my mother plays it safe. She gives me the money. <laughs> my sister always asks me. <laughs> they really play safe. But I've been so disappointed that I have zero expectations. I have to admit, I go into Christmas and receiving gifts with zero expectations. So and when, what does that do for you when you start when with it zero is, When I go in with zero expectations, whatever I get is a bonus. Because so, uh, it's a zero okay. expectation. Because you open yourself up to gratitude and receiving. Zero expectations. That's so nice. if I receive socks, oh well, okay, socks. You know, if I receive a pyjama, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. I'm like, mm, okay, pyjama. I think that's but really nice because basically you're, you're opening yourself up to in, into a state of grace, which is yes. receptive. And I let go of my expectations of them. That's nice. Know? That's beautiful. So, I don't know. That's my little thing. Yeah. Okay, so more Lavi Davi Christmas songs and we'll be right back with more questions. And welcome back to Let's Talk About Sex here on XFM 100.2 with me, Melanie Kelly, and Emma Hogg. And today it's a love at Christmas time and we're answering some questions that Emma got on her Insta page. So, Emma, next question. Next In question. In relation to Christmas, obviously. Yes, Christmas and love. Ooh. So, I have no idea what to get my wife for Christmas. What shall I get her? Does any man know what to get his wife or girlfriend for Christmas? <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> Hmm. Do they really ever know what to get? <laughs> I don't know. I okay. I don't know. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We won't tell you why we're laughing in the studio. No, I believe that there are men out there who do put an effort into getting their partner a gift. Yes. There are loads. Absolutely. Men. Loads. What to get his wife? He has no idea what his wife likes. The thing is, how can we answer this? We don't know. Well. You could think about your wife's love languages, right? Mm -hmm. So Ooh, the I like that. You could do that, which is the f so the five love languages, right? There's mm -hmm. physical touch, words of affirmation, gifts, acts, acts of, service. of service, and I always, always, Compliment appreciation. always forget. No, that's 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 words of affirmation. It will that. come to me. Yeah. But anyway, Gary Chapman has a quiz online so you ac you could actually do this quiz with your wife and see what her primary love languages are and um, but you can also just tune in and see what your what your wife responds to the best like kind of um, I think women are very easy in what sense to buy a gift for really yeah. why but th maybe that's because you're a woman I don't know but okay so let me give you some tips is she into handbags is she into bags mm. is there a necklace she's always wanted other earrings that she likes. Does she like being pampered and going to the spa? Maybe a weekend break for, for both of you because you have been both so busy with the kids. 
Mm-hmm. It may be a, a what a has she been like, craving? What hey, like what crazy? has she been h- hinting at? Yes, is it a beautiful romantic getaway? Is it going for for the weekend to Rome? Mm-hmm. You know, is it a nice ring that she's been looking at? Mm-hmm. Does she need? Is she complaining that she doesn't have enough clothes so you can buy her vouchers and then tell her I'm going out for the day with you shopping? Mm-hmm. I mean, I that's why I say I think that women are. Are, are easy in a way because all you have to do is literally sit back look at your partner and if this is made listen to what well. dro- what hints and they're listen, dropping you know th- th- have they been wearing their sunglasses for three years do you want to get them a voucher and it's true and they've probably at some point said like my yes. my sunglasses are you know not it, looking it, that, good anymore or whatever pass, you it's know true. i mean it's true a new laptop maybe because okay maybe a laptop is not romantic but but I, for example, am constantly on my laptop. And I am sure if I had a partner, they would hear me say, Ella, the battery on my laptop is going, uh, when I'm on 30%, it goes up. You understand? So I'm giving an example with the laptop. But, no, but uh, you could but put like a battery I, pack in the stocking or something. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You know, does your but partner wait, want I'm, c- I'm curious. How come you think women are easier to buy than men? Like, I, I agree with you, but sometimes uh, I think it's just because I'm not a dude. No, no, it's because women have the... The okay, how many men do you know would like a day at the spa, for example? My husband. Okay, well, <laughs> one of the very, very few. But the thing is, uh, with women, you know, there's. But why do you think the, men don't like a day at the spa? Uh, so many guys love a day at the spa. They do. They I think they just do, don't say it. But I mean. Uh, oh, if only we had a man in the studio. Oh, if only. <laughs> <laughs> I think women are easier. Okay, I don't think it's difficult to get to a man, but I will give you a very little example. Go into a children's shop mm. and go into the section of the girls, okay, and go in the section of the boys. Mm. Three quarters of when you have your children and you have a boy, you will understand. God bless. You yes, will understand. But it's, but it's not just about getting the woman something, right? No, you said yourself no, but, you've but, been let down so many times. Vast, it's about tuning yes, in. Yes, yes. But on a choice, on a level of choice, there's yes. far more to, to, to think of gifts for a girl than for a guy. But don't Different. you think that maybe our brains are just biased because we're women? So we think of gifts for women easier than we think of gifts for men? And if I had to get, if I had to think for a gift of a man, okay, yeah, I would think sunglasses. I would think watch, jewelry, not really, perfume. They're all boring. You I know? just think of sex. <laughs> that's not a gift. That's something. Oh, that my husband! Be. I'm speaking about. Okay, uh, my father probably just watched this and cringed. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, sex as a present. Mm. No, a but getaway. Uh, well, sex is a present, like often, but it's nice. Eh? I mean, m- men respond to sex a lot. I mean, I would buy nice lingerie for me <laughs> to enjoy with him, mm. you know, or nice. Th- oh, by the way, mm. during Christmas time. Mm. OK, did you know that? So a friend of mine owns um, uh, a shop in Malta. Mm-hmm. Okay, with sex toys. <laughs> okay. And during Christmas, she is completely sold out. Oh, wow. Stocking fillers? Uh, so, <laughs> you know, we, we might... Do you want kinkier sex this Christmas? Which is one of the questions. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we can finish with that last okay. Did we answer the question, though? Yes, I think How we do did. I get... Oh, yes. I hope we did. I think we did. If we did, let us know. If we didn't, then complain down below, yes, please. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> so kinky sex I think if you want kinky sex just go to a sex shop or go to somewhere either on your own or together and buy some stuff no wait wait what are we answering exactly kinky how sex. to have kink- kinky sex over Christmas what did you say go to a sex shop Uh huh. and buy some new stuff that you've never used before okay that doesn't that I don't get excited about that edible underwear Laura. (laughs) (laughs) I I always think from such a different space. I I think, okay, like kind of. Where do you go in your head? I I, I think about getting to the identity of lover. I think uh, I. I sort of. But I, I think maybe I'm just too much of a of a. 
a lifestyle strategist, like I just always think like, okay, what's your outcome? What identity do you need to be in to make that happen? Good sex Like, why outcome. do you want it? Like, kind of, I'm always like that. Whereas you go straight to strategy, like, so <laughs> you're like, and the blondies, like, <laughs> they will be made of gummy bears. <laughs> it gets stuck in my braces. <laughs> ah, so you're going to put them on him. <laughs> the braces. <laughs> I kinky think. sex. You know what I do like? What? The Christmas boxes. With the little window. <laughs> no, just with the, like gingerbread men or like Rudolph. They're you not know, sexy, Emma. Of, but they're cute and they're playful. Mm-hmm. I think if you want to get kinky over Christmas, connect with your partner over Christmas. Like right? as in connect. make time for each other. Yes, in a sex shop. <laughs> Or, you know, with wine and candles and stuff. You can make a really cozy area at home. Oh, my God. Like, I with mean, candles no, joking, everywhere joking and, and, joking and blankets. Fine. Yes, definitely, definitely. I would go for all the romantics, you know, the romantic stuff. Nice bottle of wine, nice, mm. nice food, some strawberries, some chocolate fondue. Ooh. You know, really go all the way. Some fairy lights, you know. Get I like the way you the looked dog. at me like, are you on board yet? Like, yeah. have I seduced you? Have I seduced you? <laughs> So get rid of the kids, get rid of the dog, get rid of the cats, the birds, everything. <laughs> music, very important. Music, what music do you like? Uh, you could go on YouTube, uh, you did it fun, uh, sexy. What's bedroom, your sex music? What's one vibes. of your favorites? I wanna sex you up. No way! <laughs> <laughs> All night. <laughs> Vera, it's a great song. Oh. It's a great song. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's a good vibe going on. <laughs> you crack me up. So, yes, I mean, I think, but, but then explore, you know, with your partner together. Have fun. Eh? Have fun. If you want be to explore, playful. I'm going to be a bit of a, I'm going to be a bit of a therapist. Yeah. Go. If you want to be able to explore with your partner, you need to create safety, which means that you need to feel connected. So to connect Most it definitely. means you need to be putting energy into your relationship um, in a way that's fulfilling. You need to be nourishing. You need to be showing each other you care for each other, making space for each other, blah, 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 blah. And then you can really explore because you feel safe, which is amazing. I agree completely. With all the joking around, I agree completely. There has to be a connection. Um, there has to be there has to be safety, and then the kink will come later. The kinky, you know, yeah. once once you go there. But, but exactly. But I think ek, if you have a partner and you go you Christmas Eve or one of the, I think that <clears throat> dump the usual going out to eat or something like that, and just go for something. Hmm. You know, sexy cozy, sexy cozy, sexy nice cozy lingerie, sexy cozy <laughs> Christmas, red, red lingerie, red, red, red Christmas. Yes, you can I be Mrs. Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Intimacy. <me. laughs> Let's go. So, Emma, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank tonight. you for inviting me. It was lovely to do a Christmas show. You know, I love Christmas. I know. And I know what you are doing during Christmas time. <laughs> Sex? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Lots of it. <laughs> Go, girls. <laughs> so anyway, good good night, everybody. Thank you for following us. Thank you, Emma, for being here in the studio. Thank I you will so much. not see you before Christmas. So Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Yeah. Good night. Good night. <laughs>